And we're live. Hello, everybody. Happy uh, Wednesday. So today I have another guest on my channel, Becky. Becky, it's so nice to uh, be here with you. And I'm super excited to actually talk to you about uh, today's topic. And today we're going to talk about when you are navigating your career, no matter if you got laid off or if you are trying to make career moves, right, going for promotion or go for your next career goal or you are switching industry, that you don't have to do it alone. As a matter of fact, I would argue you shouldn't do it alone. And it's important not to do it alone. So it's important to have the right people in your network, the right people in your space to do that thing so uh let's start with um like first of all like as you're joining as always uh, uh leave me a comment tell me where uh, tell me and uh, where you're watching me from and um and not work with each other because like uh, as uh i always say that the best uh, way to network on linkedin on live streams, right? Live streams and audio events, right? Two, inv two events only in that you should absolutely attend. And on live streams, the way to network is to comment and react on comments, react on live stream and check those reactions and connect with those people. So Becky, let's start with like, can you just tell uh, my audience a little bit about yourself? Like, what do you do? Like, what, what you all about and maybe a little bit your um like a little bit of an origin story and stuff like that yeah sure um so i currently work for an hr tech company uh we work with the middleware uh like i9s verifying income unemployment trackers things like that um, i work on the integrations team uh just started a couple weeks ago and I work remotely. I live in Murray, Kentucky, which is in Western Kentucky. Um, but a little bit about my background. I'm a career changer. Uh, I worked for the Army for seven and a half years as a federal contractor. And I was a recreation therapist. So I worked with wounded, ill, and injured soldiers. Um, I did adaptive sports, things like that. And uh, the reason that I switched into tech was I needed a career that was a little bit more stable, something I could do from anywhere, help more people, um, and that was that I could grow in. Uh, so I attended a boot camp uh, right around the COVID time period, and then um, ended up getting my first job in January of 2022. Nice, nice, nice. So, um, Kind of like going back to the topic, right? That you don't have to navigate your career alone. Um, I always, in my previous live streams and in this live stream, I always say that I don't win alone, right? And mm -hmm. uh, contrary to like sometimes what we see on social media that, oh, like you don't need nobody, you can do everything, you can do all things by yourself. Well, I mean, you can do all things by yourself, but for me, for example, like taking me back to my early career days, right? When I was like starting as a QA engineer or even transitioning into like iOS development, especially transitioning into iOS development, I couldn't do it without the right people. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, when I say the right people, like, I mean, like, uh, first of all, your community, you gotta know people in your community, you gotta uh, you got to have the community, you got to have the people in your community who can support you and who can uh, like and who uh, and who can give you an advice. And, uh, and also you going to see the people who walked your path before. So that is also really important. But also, I think it is important um, to know, like to have the right mentor like whatever, like whatever path you choose, like whether you like pay for the mentor or you find a like person who can guide you and mentor that. So, and uh, I, hello, hello, Jamal. Uh, no, yes, networking is a superpower. So in your transformation, right? In your transformation and then your career journey, like uh, can you talk a little bit the importance of uh, 
like kind of not doing it alone. So I know that you leverage the power of networking and I know that you, uh, that you um, connected with community a lot. So can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll say that I did feel alone when I first started um, because I didn't know anybody in tech. Um, you know, that was, I had zero friends or people I hadn't talked to in a long time that were in that space. So I did feel alone. So I started attending virtual meetups. I, you know, went on Eventbrite. I did meetup. I found Slack and Discord and things like that. So I started immerse, immersing myself into virtual communities and would just ask for a coffee chat with somebody and just learn their story. And, you know, because especially with community, it's not just what I can get, it's what I can do for somebody else. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to learn their journey because it's going to help me in the end. It's going to help other people to pay it forward, things like that. But um, networking is definitely a superpower. I advocate it all the time. In fact, both my part-time contract roles and how I got both my jobs was networking. Um, I think each job I submitted maybe max 15 applications. All of my interviews that I landed were not from cold applying. It was from my network or people I worked with or people that I met along the way. That is how I got referred. That is how I got to where I am now. Yes. And also, uh, Becky is a client of mine. And uh, this is something that I also emphasize in my program. And I think at one of our first sessions, we talk about the power of networking, that you got to network, that you got to connect with people. And I provided you like a useful tips and tricks how to do it on LinkedIn because uh, the search bar, for example, is not the only place where you can find people. And like just being in the community, participating in the discussions, right? Like that's going to increase your... Uh, network so much. So um, I would like to ask you this. So um, when um, can you kind of describe your situation before mm -hmm. joining my program where you were um, like and what, what made you to decide to work with me and you're currently in the program, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, we're still going and how like you're kind of after, after you join the program. So kind of like your before and after um, and how it, it, like how it affected you or how mm -hmm. it is affecting you as a person and how it is affecting you as a professional. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when you and I met um, on, you know, via LinkedIn, I had gotten laid off from my company. Um, I personally was side, side blinded by that. It was something I wasn't expecting. Um, I did see the writing on the wall um, just because of a lot of that is going around right now. It's been going around for a while. Um, so I was really in a hopeless place. Um, I dove into my first job, like head in, like head down, just putting all the work that I could and I stopped networking. And so I was restarting my journey because I thought something was guaranteed and in reality it wasn't. So I was not in a good place. I did not have any income coming in and, but I knew I needed mentorship. I knew I needed someone to help guide me. And even though on paper, I didn't have the money, I knew it was going to pay off in the long run. And that's exactly what it did. Um, you know, you showed me a few extra tips and tricks that I didn't know about. You helped boost my confidence um, with some other things. You helped over my LinkedIn and my resume and just really helped me to get back into a confident space that I knew was deep down in there. But of course, because I had gotten knocked down and, you know, had the wind knocked out of me. It, it pays to have someone on your side. And I absolutely believe in investing in yourself. It's going to pay off and it's going to help you to help others in the long run as well. But, you know, now I just started a job three weeks ago. I love my team. Um, it was from another coworker. Like it's just things are on the up. And then I have, we have so much to still go over and I'm super excited about it. Yeah. And um, also, 
and it's like it it is so important to have and kind of like uh, with Jennifer we went over that a little bit I again like I, I'm gonna say it again I don't know how to scientifically explain that right mm -hmm. like and I wish I could say well, I actually gave you unique framework how to find a job within hours after you got you laid off. After you got laid off, and here it is: you apply that unique framework that nobody knows about, and you got a job, right? Mm -hmm. Like we kind of started building your digital front door, right? Your digital, mm -hmm. like your digital presence, your online presence, and. Uh, I know like it takes some time to implement those mm -hmm. steps because some people like just, they just jump ahead and they, they just implement right away. Mm -hmm. And some people it needs like, they need time to like process it and implement step by step. Cause I know it's a lot, like for 12 weeks, it seems like a short amount of time in mm -hmm. a way, but it's a lot of information. It's a lot of steps to implement. And uh, what 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 was really like uh, what was really exciting for me is that um, we we like that we just talk about networking and like that confidence that like that you have something on your team and like I remember you like actually coming to the session and telling me that hey like I'm go like uh, I'm going to network with this person with that person or with mm -hmm. that person mm -hmm. uh, or I think it was just one person uh, and uh, then I'm gonna see how it goes mm -hmm. and I said yes yeah, that's the way to do it yeah absolutely you should elaborate like this this is exactly the right way to look for a job and um, and then like uh, literally next week after you when you texted me like oh I got a job like I was super excited for you. I was super excited for you, but also like, but wait, like I didn't tell her how to negotiate her salary. Yeah. And I think you also said that like, oh, like, but I know we didn't go over how to negotiate my salary and is what it is, but hey, like I want to still go through the program. Mm -hmm. I want to finish it. So my next opportunity, when when the right time comes, mm -hmm. I know I, I have the toolbox uh, in my arsenals that I can ne negotiate the salary it was like that that was that that was a blessing for me because when you are um all ha when you have results right when my people that I'm working with because like I am uh I'm very dedicated to you all and I pray for you I I, I said you uh, good vibes and I'm absolutely like rooting for you and when you get results it's a blessing for me as well so um, tell me, who would you recommend this program for? Who would be a good fit for this program? Who this program is going to work out for? I mean, really, I'd say anybody. Like, there's there's so much value in in everything from that you know that you offer, and I think it's a continual process because there's a lot of things that I knew that I either like forgot or didn't think about, or, you know, maybe there's a different way to approach a problem and then things, you know, constantly change. But at the same time, having that game plan and having that, you know, person that has your back is, is so valuable. So, I mean, I'd really say anybody is, and especially if you feel like if you haven't broken into tech yet, or you were like me, and only had one job and you just weren't quite sure if you were like where you stood or if you had enough experience. I mean, really it's, it's never too early to start this um, because it's going to help pay off in the long run. Um, it's going to give you the skills that you need. So like if you're on the fence and you're thinking, Oh, I'm not there yet. I don't have a portfolio project or I don't have this or I don't have that. Well, I didn't. And I still mm -hmm. landed a job. Like yes. I haven't worked on some of my projects since boot camp. Like, so, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have a portfolio page and, you know, it's, I know not everyone's story is that way, but it was a lot of the tools that, that you gave me and some of them I knew and I had done before. So I did have that base, but I mean, really it just, it pays off. Um, so even if I don't see it now, I will see it later. Yes, yes, absolutely. And also, like, I know certain some people, like, one of the objections sometimes I get is like, well, I don't need career coaching program. Like, I, I kind of know how to navigate my career. I'm having trouble with technical skills. Mm -hmm. And I 
often tell them like, well, as a, like as a mentor, as a career coach in tech, technical skills and technical interview and technical portion is a, like, is a great part, is a huge part of my program. So like, can you talk about your experiences in my program and like when it related to technical skills mm -hmm. and how we're closing gaps in technical knowledge that mm -hmm. like people might have? Yeah, absolutely. I know um, in a couple of my technical interviews that I was first having, um, I would get caught up on the language, especially if it was something that I didn't know. And so something that's been valuable is you've been helping guide me on things that take it a step further um, that, you know, maybe me as someone who's more new wouldn't think about. So like looking at edge cases first and then working the problem backwards and how to think kind of outside the box and look past the, you know, the tech stack and how to Google things. So, I mean, really, even if we're not talking specifically like things that you would learn in a boot camp or self-taught or whatever, you're mm -hmm. giving valuable skills that's going to uh, really provide value in the job because that's what you do on the job is you problem solve and you have mm -hmm. to figure out ways to figure it out and you do it in a clear, concise manner that's clean and readable and goes forward. So that's been incredibly helpful um, and also takes the stress out of, you know, I hope I don't have to go through an interview anytime soon again, but the next time that I have to, I'll be able to have a lot more confidence in that and more tools in my tool belt. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, like, thank you for sharing that. So Rashad is saying, thank you for sharing with us. And I appreciate your comments y'all and definitely connect with each other. Definitely keep your comments uh, uh, coming. Also, if you are new to my live stream, if it is the first time you are seeing my live stream, drop uh, one, in the chat so i would like to greet you in the proper way i would like to uh, give you a special welcome and also and also um if you are uh if you've been on my channel before and if you've been on my live stream before if you're my og drop o og in the chat i know back uh, uh becky is og so do i have other ogs in in the chat so um my personal experience, never share your salary and the time you spent in the company. I did and I, uh, uh, I did and I resigned because of the people who tell, uh, oh, like how cool your company is like uh, in the last salary. I mean, like definitely there, like when it comes to salary negotiation, right? Like, uh, it, like they're like, there are two like there are two different approaches when it comes to agency, and this is something that I teach in my program. When you negotiate salary with with, with the agency, is one approach, right? Because normally with agency, you, it's very upfront. They they start with numbers. When it comes to more like full time, it's at the end. And like telling you like my personal opinion, telling your salary how much you are making, I would not recommend that. Like it's none of people's business. And if, if it is a deal breaker for your recruiter, then that recruiter is a deal breaker for you. So like, yeah, I, I, I would not do that. I, I, I never do that. Like I, like I normally try to uh, uh, navigate the conversation into like, okay, let's talk about my target salary. This is like, this is what I want to make versus what I'm currently making and try to shift the like the attention from like my salary because it it feels very intrusive and like I am more or less private person so um Becky uh tell me um like uh Tell me also, like, I, I also see that you and Jennifer, like, you start interacting, like, with each other and you start building yeah. um, the community. So, uh, and, uh, and first of all, it really warms my heart, like, to see you interacting only in and supporting each other. So, um, can you kind of speak about that? I know, like, I know it's not a huge community right now, but you see, like, you see my OGs, like, you mm -hmm. see people who like either in the program or even if they are not in the program, but they're like either like assisting me with something or like uh, uh, part of other mentorship 
things that I do, like they always support. Can you speak about it a little, just a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's like Jennifer is amazing. Like we've been chatting back and forth. She's joining me on the hundred days of um, open source right now. It's just, I mean, the best part about tech besides taking home like a paycheck, obviously we have to make money to live. That's just a necessity uh, is the community. It's, it's having people in your corner and getting to know each other. And um, you know, it's, it's, I love the tech community. Like everyone's super supportive. Um, and so the more people I can meet, the, the better. Um, it's, it's super valuable to, to me because you just never know. You might end up working together. Yes. Yes, exactly. And this is like, this is what it is about. Like as, well, as people joining in, right? Like we might start like I, I eventually right i want to group everybody together is mm -hmm. so we can network we can share opportunities and i'm in the process of creating slack space for like community slack but also we have private channels for my um uh, cohorts right for each cohort or uh like share space for the client when people when people can actually share insights share like valuable referrals and, and valuable opportunities so, something that it's in the works, but uh, when I am working with clients, I am trying to also create a valuable community where people can share uh, their experiences and share their insights. Because it's not just like, in order to make it in tech, right? Well, yes, you you can chart with your technical skills, and it will help you. You can optimize your digital digital presence you can establish your executive presence but also like as i said many many times nobody makes it alone and this is why another portion of my program and this is why i work with multiple people at the same time is to build a community to build that community that will support um one another so um and uh Becky, like what advice do you have for my viewers for my audience like maybe like who is uh going like either go going through a layoff because like you you and i we actually both went through this experience yeah. like we, you and i we both know how hard it is mm -hmm. or maybe for people who are trying to make career moves right mm -hmm. maybe somebody like realizes okay i need to pivot i need to go i need to go to more senior role or i need to I need to do something different in my career. So what advice would you have for them? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I guess I can speak to um, whether it's your first job and you're just not sure, you know, you're struggling to get in or your career changing. Um, there's several things I could focus on, but one is be your authentic self. Um, your soft skills and your people skills are your superpower. Um, being able to work on teams so what I told a couple of my other friends that were going through boot camp and that were career changers was to find those skills that are transferable. You'll actually be surprised at what will, and then get involved in the community, find people to mentor you, whether it's technical or, um, you know, with like your mental game or anything like that, always have a positive mindset. So even on like, a bad day or when you're down, let yourself process it, but don't fall into the victim mentality either. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's the world is happening for you, not against you. If you have that mindset, you will break through. Um, and so that's really kind of what got me through was having that community to rely on. Like I have a local group in Nashville that we do a meet. I had you, I had, some of my other friends that were laid off where we were able to kind of like talk. And then I found people to like build passion projects with so that we can start doing that and gaining technical skills. Um, I have another group that I'm a part of. So really it's just find that path, take it one step at a time, one day at a time. And if you really envision it happening, it's going to happen. Um, you know, that's, it's, you just got to believe in yourself and it, it'll come to fruition. It, sometimes it takes a while. Everyone's path is different. Gosh, I went through so many different, like 
job interviews, it wasn't even funny. I've gone anything from like zero technical interview that where it was a conversation to a take home test, a two hour technical interview, and then a personality test after that. So, I mean, it's just, there's no set standards. Yes. Um, but find other people because you never know who's on the same journey or has a similar experience. Yes. And um, y'all, if you're watching uh, me on LinkedIn, um, connect with Becky. Like she's an amazing engineer. She's an amazing person. Like you won't have Becky in your network. Uh, also for people like us, I'm, I am streaming all over, all over the internet, like on YouTube, on Twitter. Uh, how people, uh, what was, what is the best way uh, for people to connect with you? Um, I would say I'm most active on LinkedIn. Um, I'm starting to um, gain a little bit of a pre presence on Twitter, especially with this hundred days of um, open source, but LinkedIn would be where I'm the most active. And I'm happy to have a conversation with anybody, do a coffee chat, um, offer advice, groups to get involved with, like really a listening ear, anything that somebody needs. Yeah. And also, if you are interested in my coaching program, uh, the link is in my bio. So definitely grab a link, um, grab a slot that works for you. Um, and I will be so happy to see you as a part of my community and my coaching program. And like you, like you saw Jennifer yesterday, you like you see Becky, you see amazing people that you're going to be uh, learning and climbing that mountain that you are willing to climb that you want to climb together so i definitely invite everybody to my coaching program if you're a software developer if you're a qa engineer like when you have your foundation um so let's have a conversation so becky thank you so much for coming uh to my live stream i know it's a little late when you where you at i i appreciate that a lot and um any final thoughts for my viewer, viewers? Any final thoughts for my audience? Yeah. Um, first of all, again, I'm, I'm honored that you asked me to come on and to, to speak. Um, and I mean, my last thoughts are invest in yourself. Um, having a mentor really pays off um, in the long run. And I think it's going to be a continual journey. Um, there will be times where you may not need it as much, but um a lot of times we can, especially if we're a giving personality, we, we give to everybody else, but then not to ourselves. But you can't truly give to others if you don't take care of yourself. So, I mean, investing in myself, investing in your program, you know, was definitely one of the best decisions I could have made. So I'm, I'm really excited to go through the rest of the program and continue to learn. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, everybody who showed up in the comments, who is watching on replay. If you're watching on replay, drop replay in the comments, react, re share. Uh, you never know who, who needs to hear that. So thank you so much. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, y'all.